Africa, just south of the equator. This is the third year of a drought and it is getting serious. The last major drought in the 1960s lasted seven years. Thousands of animals died. Many will die if this drought goes on much longer. This waterhole is dried up. The gazelle can get by on the moisture locked in the grasses, but the zebra needs water. So the herd sets off following the lead mare to water. The savanna is bone dry. There is little nourishment in the grass. As a species, zebra have evolved to survive droughts like this one. In places, even the dried grass has been swept away. Dust devils prowl the land, whipped up by the thermals as dry air rises. Still, the zebras move on. Water, a small river still contains some, and where it pools up, the herds congregate. The day shimmers with heat, but the heat is now the zebra's friend. It is too hot for the lions to hunt, so they seek shade. The dust from the zebra herd is not far away, but there will be other thirsty zebras later in the day. For this herd on this day, their need for water has been satisfied. Every day, an African tribe, known as the Samburu, walk between two and three kilometers to get water. The water is used in a specific order to conserve it and to get the most benefit. First, it's used to drink. Then it's used to cook and to prepare food with. It's then used to wash with, and finally, if any is left over, it's used to clean clothes. The Samburu really have it lucky compared to most people in the world. Over one billion people have no access to portable water. Most people in the world have to walk about six kilometers to get their daily water ration. What we take for granted is one of the world's most precious resources. Let's listen to what the experts have to say. This is a classical example of non-sustainability. We had a fantastic water source, we screwed it up so we look for another source somewhere else. But there are no other sources now. A system came crashing down. A, a whole system that was full of, full of problems and full of, had been on its last legs for a long time. In Glacier National Park, where I do a lot of my work, there used to be 150 glaciers. We're down to about 27 now. And many of these that were very large in size are reduced to less than one third of their previous size. We consume more water both in both countries and any other place in the world. And at some point, we're going to have to start conserving. We monitor water that's been coming from watersheds that's in the distribution system that's probably contaminated, and we're testing it as people are drinking it. That's incorrect. Water is going to be one of the issues over which conflict is going to occur as we go into the next few decades. And I think that should scare us and should disturb us. Water will be uh, the issue of the next uh, 10 or 20 years, and uh, I think it will bode well for Canada to be part of that action. People have always enjoyed being by water, whether in the sea, a lake, or a river. In Ontario, there are about 250,000 freshwater lakes, along with countless rivers and streams, not to mention a multitude of plants and animals that thrive in such lush surroundings. This natural wealth is a blessing. It's the basis for our prosperity, our growth, and our quality of life. Of all the water on our planet, 97.5% is seawater, and three quarters of the remaining 2.5% is locked in polar ice caps. The tiny bit left over is drinkable. Canadians are one of the most wasteful users of water in the world. We consume 350 liters of water a day per capita, second only to the Americans. The average global citizen needs only between 20 and 40 liters of water a day for drinking and sanitation. It is time to think about how to conserve water to ensure a sustainable environment for many years to come.